So uh, today I'm going to be speaking on colchicine and ACS. Now colchicine is an age-old drug which has been used uh, for long uh, in uh, uh, treatment of gouty, uh, gouty arthritis. Uh, uh, but now I'll just tell you short about colchicine because we are going to be talking about its uh, use in uh, acute coronary syndrome. Is it really helpful or not? We are going to find out uh, in the next extracted from the flowering plants of colchicine automail. Among its pleiotropic effects, colchicine affects the immune system and has anti-inflammatory properties. It down-regulates multiple inflammatory pathways, uh, leading to a decrease in neutrophil function and migration through, vas through the vascular endothelium by tubulin disruption. Moreover, it inhibits the NLRP, uh, NLRP3 inflammasomes containing protein by reducing cleavage of pro-interleukin-1 beta to active interleukin-1 beta. So colchicine reduces the local production of uh, coronary chemokines such as uh, MCP1 and tumor necrosis uh, factor alpha by macrophages. It also has some antifibrotic effects. So this is just a chart summarizing the same. I'll skip this. So uh, colchicine is absorbed in the jejunum and ileum and it accumulates in the tissues. It is metabolized in the liver and intestine by cytochrome P450, 34A and P glycoprotein GP. So the absorption of oral colchicine is rapid but incomplete and uh, the onset of action is approximately 24 hours via the oral route. It is excreted mainly by the biliary system, intestines and kidneys. This needs to be taken uh, into consideration. This point needs to be taken into consideration because we need to be careful about colchicine into uh, uh, colchicine usage in uh, CKD patients and in uh, liver failure patients. So colchicine main indications, as I said earlier, it's used in the prophylaxis and treatment of gouty flares in adults, familial Mediterranean fever in adults and in children above four years. It is commonly used in treatment of, not very commonly, but yes, it is used in treatment of, recommended for the use of uh, treatment of acute viral peri uh, pericarditis. Contraindications for this drug uh, in patients with renal and he uh, hepatic impairment, it should not be given. It should not be used in conjunction with uh, PGP or, uh, strong C uh, or strong CYP3A4A inhibitors, uh, such as apixaban, uh, cyclosporin, dabigatran, digoxin, endoxaban, rivoroxaban, tacrolimus, clarithromycin, erythromycin, dizim, itraconazole, ketoconazole, ritonavir, verapamil. In these patients, life-threatening and fatal colchicine toxicity has been reported with colchicine taken in therapeutic doses also. The common uh, adverse side effects that are uh, seen with colchicine usage are um, diarrhea, and uh, uh, pharyngolaryngeal pain. Diarrhea was reported in anything between 9 to 25% of patients. Most common uh, adverse reaction are abdominal pain, diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting. Slides are not moving, somebody said. Can you see the slides, please? Madam, it is not moving. It's stuck in the first uh, slide itself, colitisin and ACS. The network here is clear. Linda, you can help. Shall I just tell? Go ahead. Shall I go ahead? The network here is clear, but. Uh, I guess there's, there might be some network issues. Uh, anyway, your talk is very lucid and we are getting what you're trying to say even without slides. So you can go ahead. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So the common side effect that, that I said was the common side effect that was noticed with colchicine was diarrhea. Anything between 9% to 20, 25%. The common side, uh, uh, sorry, that's here. Uh, then coming to uh, colchicine usage in special populations, like I said, uh, we have to be careful with renal and hepatic impairment. In the presence of mild to moderate renal or hepatic impairment, adjustment of dosage uh, is not required for treatment of gout flare, prophylaxis of gout flare, and with the, uh, but patients should be monitored very closely. Uh, similarly, in cases with, uh, uh, we, we need not be very, uh, we need not be very cautious when we are uh, using it for patients with uh, uh, severe heart failure uh, or the uh, end stage uh, renal diseases, we need to be careful. In patients with, uh, hello, am I audible? 
yes you are audible sorry sorry so then um, i'm going to be telling about uh, three or four few trials three or four trials which have been um, um, like which have uh, told us about the good usage of uh, colchicine whereas uh, there are some trials which said that it was not really useful so there is one trial called uh, called is colcott trial time to treatment initiation of colchicine and cardiovascular outcomes after myocardial infarction in the colchicine cardiovascular outcome trials that is colcott trial now in colcott trial what was done is patients were randomly assigned to receive colchicine or placebo within 30 days post myocardial infarction the primary end efficacy endpoint was a composite of cardiovascular death resuscitated cardiac arrest mi stroke or urgent hospitalization for angina requiring coronary vascularization and the relationship between endpoints and the various tti that is uh, time to treatment initiation it was examined for three uh, for three different startups so among 4661 patients Included in this, uh, there were total of one thousand one hundred and ninety-three, seven twenty patients, and two thousand seven hundred and forty-eight. Three groups were uh, received the medicines. What was the result of this? After a median follow-up of twenty-two months, there was a significant reduction in the incidence of the primary endpoint for patients in whom colchicine was initiated less within three days compared to placebo. in contrast to the patients in whom colchicine was initiated between days 4 and 7 or after day 8 so beneficial effects of early initiation of colchicine were also demonstrated for urgent hospitalization for angina requ requiring revascularization all coronary revascularizations and composite of cv death cardiac uh, resuscitated cardiac arrest mi or stroke so this this study um, the study uh, concluded that patients benefit from early in hospital initiation of colchicine after mi that is within 3 days after the within 3 days of the mi if it is initiated it helps so what was the dose that was used here was 0.5 mg to 1 mg 0.5 mg was the initial dose that was started uh, when the patient didn't told it it was 0.5 mg otherwise up to 1 mg colchicine also was given the um, meta analysis of randomized trials that was done that is colchicine in patients with uh, coronary artery disease a systematic review meta analysis of randomized trial uh, i took this from uh, journal of american heart association a uh, study done by koffler uh, et al so to evaluate the utility of colchicine in patients with acute and chronic cad a systematic review and meta analysis was performed now is the slide available uh, see yes. yes yes it's now visible okay i think i'll just keep this slow uh, so medline m uh, m based cochrane central and conference abstracts were searched uh, for uh, from uh, january 1995 to october 2020 and randomized trials assessing colchicine compared with placebo standard therapy uh, uh, in patients with cad were included of 3000 uh, 3000 odd citations 13 randomized trials were included and what was the result colchicine versus placebo or standard therapy in patients with cad reduced risk of new myocardial infarction and stroke or transient ischemic attacks with a significant p value for both or a repeat revascularization procedures but treatment with colchicine compared with placebo or standard therapy had no influence on the all cause mortality or cardiovascular mortality now colchicine definitely increased the risk of gastrointestinal side effects which is already known to us so here we can see some odd uh, some 11 odd studies were included in this uh, studies by uh, kefetal cool trial and lodoco trial which was which was done in 2013 and then lodoco trial which happened in 2020 as well then colcott trial then the cops trial colchicine pcr trial all these uh, all the studies uh, results were pooled and then uh, it was we came to a conclusion that uh, the there is no significant uh, reduction in all cause mortality you can see the p value was 0.83 and uh, cardiovascular mortality also uh, there was no significant reduction in cardiovascular mortality overall 
overall cardiovascular mort mortality. There was no reduction in that. And uh, new myocardial infarction, there was definitely a significant reduction in the new myocardial infarction rates. There was a significant reduction in the stroke as well as transient ischemic attack rates. So to conclude, in patients with acute and chronic CAD, adding colgicine to standard therapy seemed to reduce the risk of ischemic events, namely uh, MI and stroke or TIA. It reduces the risk for repeat revascularization procedures. Colgicine therapy may have an increased risk for uh, GI side effects, but there is no influence on all-cause cardiac mortality. So the LODOCO trial, which I said uh, was first done in 2013 and then the, in the second phase, it was run in 2020. This was a randomized double blind trial involving patients recruited 30 days after MI. The patients were randomly assigned to receive either low-dose colchicine, that is 0.5 mg once daily or placebo. And primary efficacy endpoint was again the same, composite of death from, uh, death from CV causes or resuscitated cardiac MI, stroke, urgent hospitalization from angina leading to coronary revascularization. In this 4,754 patients were uh, taken and 50-50% uh, of them were divided into colchicine group and placebo group. They were followed up for 22 months. Here, uh, the primary endpoint occurred in 5.5% of colchicine group and 7% 7 per, 7 in those of placebo group. Uh, diarrhea was uh, uh, reported in 9.7% patients and pneumonia, pneumonia was uh, reported in only the less than 0.4% patients of the placebo group. So the major clinical endpoints here was there was a significant, uh, significant change in the major clinical endpoint. <clears throat> this is the uh, Kaplan-Meier event curves for primary efficacy composite endpoint of death from CV causes resuscitated. Uh, we can see that there is a significant difference in the cardiovascular events. So this trial also concluded that among patients with recent MI, colchicine at a dose of 0.5 mg daily led to a significantly lower dose of ischemic uh, cardiovascular events than placebo. Uh, another RCT, uh, there were RCTs, uh, randomized controlled trials comparing the incidence of cardiovascular events between patients with clinically manifest CAD randomized to colchicine versus placebo were included. And these four RCTs were uh, taken together and then a pool sample size of 11,594 patients were uh, included in this. Here, the studies that were included were a uh, Lodoco trial, Colcot trial, COP study and the uh, Lodoco 2 study. I'll not go into the details of these studies. But what was the result? Compared with placebo or no colchicine, colchicine was associated with a statistically significant reduction in the incidence of primary composite endpoint. The reduction in CV events among patients randomized to colchicine was driven by statistically significant reductions in MI, ischemic strokes, and urgent coronary vascularizations. The incidence of safety outcomes did not differ between both the groups. So it concluded that in secondary prevention of CV events, the addition of low-dose colchicine to standard medical therapy reduces the events of major CV events, but uh, all-cause mortality and CV mortality is not reduced. You are this is another, and again out of, yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah, you are audible now. I'm uh, door open. Door open, partner. Sorry. Um, yeah. So major cardiovascular events are not significantly different at day 30 in three studies. And uh, uh, one of the studies found that there is a reduction in MACE with colchicine 0.5 mg, that is uh, major uh, cardiovascular outcomes. With colchicine, 0.5 mg daily over median 22 months. Colchicine is associated with increased gastrointestinal events. There were four studies. One study which was done by Raju et al. It, uh, he included ACS patients or acute ischemic stroke patients with 80, 80 patients were included in this. In this, the dosage that was used was one milligram per day versus placebo for 30 days. This uh, colchicine did not significantly reduce HSCRP uh, at 30 days. 
Another study by Defteros uh, et al. Even here, STEMI treated patients, STEMI treated with uh, STEMI treated with PCI patients were taken. Here, a higher dose of colchicine was used, 1.5 mg immediately, and then 0.5 mg one later, uh, uh, one hour later, and then 0.5 mg BID with the uh, with the reducing dosage. We, we used uh, colchicine there. Here, the CKMB, uh, CKMB that is the cardiac marker levels was nearly half in the placebo group. And the LV myocardial volume also was smaller in the colchicine group. So here it was found that uh, colchicine definitely is helpful in STEMI treated patients with PCI. Another study, Akoda et al. Here also uh, the, these three are, all these three are below are smaller studies wherein forty or eighty patients were used. But overall, it was shown that it, uh, there were there were mixed results where they said that colchicine is useful. Somewhere they said that colchicine is not useful. It did not significantly reduce the uh, LAP volume in few studies, whereas it significantly reduced the CRP values in few studies. So. Um, this is one last study that I'm going to talk about the colchicine PCI randomized trial. Even this study was done in 2020. Uh, it says that compared with placebo, short term pre procedural colchicine did not reduce PCI related myocardial injury or maze. Uh, major adverse coronary events at 30 days, but it did attenuate, that is, it did reduce PCI-related increase in IL-6 and HSCRP concentration at 24 hours post-PCI. So this is the first study that demonstrated that an oral load of colchicine prevents rise of inflammatory biomarkers in acute injury. So, and plus it is, it also said that if it is given within three days, it is more helpful rather than uh, after uh, four to five days to eight days. Okay. So my take home message is inflammation plays a pivotal role in coronary artery disease. The anti-inflammatory drug colchicine seems to reduce ischemic events in patients with CAD. So far there is equipoise about safety and impact on mortality. And hence, I think it is not included in the ACS guidelines or in the newer guidelines where they suggest uh, using colchicine. Colchicine, of course, is used in viral pericarditis. Uh, it is more, it is helpful and it, uh, it it's being it's proven to be helpful. But uh, in ACS, still the guidelines have not included. It presents a promising supplementary drug for secondary prevention of ischemic events among patients with acute and chronic coronary artery disease. The reduced risk of potentially debilitating secondary coronary vascular or cerebrovascular events will need to be balanced against the side effect and interaction profile of colchicine. Nonetheless, several questions regarding colchicine treatment in coronary artery disease patients remain uncertain and warrant more research, including patient selection, drug dosage, and therapy duration. Thank you.